know one or two of you asked uh, about uh, my cooking videos and uh, I thought I'd actually done one of these but uh, I've just had a look on my playlist and it appears I haven't so uh, if I have I apologise but uh, I can't see it so anyway what I'm going to be doing today is goulash this is the um, the North German way for my mum's family has been passed down and uh, what I actually what we actually do is um, well I buy it in money so there's eight pound in money of pork and eight pound of beef you can see that beef's more expensive there's less and uh, what we're going to actually do is put it in one of these pots it's a, a large pot uh, we're going to add a bit of lard we're going to brown the meat uh, and then I shall add uh, some ingredients so I think the easiest way is if I just get on so let me just get some lard out of the fridge yeah I know lard you probably think oh no but anyway we're traditional we've you know we've always had it my parents you know as they say 90s never known any different so here we are then so nice bit of nice chunk of it there I'm going to drop that in, I'll have another little piece, drop that in. I shall put it back in the fridge because we don't need any more of that. I'm going to empty the, the pork into it. You can see it's what it's basically is cubes of pork. So, so over here in England it's like what we just asked for some sliced and diced pork for goulash. My butcher knows what, what I like. It's, in the case of goulash, it, it's best to have it lean, not fatty. We're going to get the beef in. I'm just concerned I weren't recording there. Makes life a lot easier if you do tidy up as you go along. So that's basically what I'm doing. Right. Um, I'm going to use that for moving it around. So I'm going to uh, put the um, cooker on there. It is on the large hob. I'm just going to make sure that these are spread out at the minute. And basically what we do, this, this part takes probably, probably about 15 minutes. And basically what you do is you just let it brown. So we've got lard in, that's going to melt. We're going to give it um, a, f a few minutes for it to brown the, the, the meat underneath. And then what we'll do is just keep turning it over. And then when we can see it's got a nice, nice uh, brown to it and all this reddish is gone, um, then we can start with the next part. So I'll be back shortly, folks. Okay folks, so now the meat's uh, been on for approximately 15 minutes and it's been turned over several times and you can see that it's it's going nicely brown. There's just a few left with a little tinge of red but that's fine. It'll, 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 that'll all change colour anyway. Okay folks, the next part of the job is to, um, well, what we'll do is we'll add some water to it. Now I've just boiled a kettle of water so what we're going to do now it, unfortunately this kettle it kind of leaks a bit so we've got to be careful now it, I have to stress that it's that you've got to have it boiled because it's got to otherwise it's going to cause a reaction when you add the water to it because there's too much of a temperature uh, difference Fancy having a closer look? Let's 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 have a look. There, folks. 
So that's why it looks at the minute. Covered it with water. This, you're going to need to make sure your kettle's topped up with water and boiled every so often because you're going to need to keep an eye on this over a couple of hours. Um, could be up to three hours, depending on what the meat's like, whether it's uh, a nice tender meat or whether it's a tougher meat. Um, yeah, so let's get back to the next part. I'm sorry about moving like this. But stick it back on the tripod. Look at that round. There we are, I'm back folks. Okay, so, got some salt. Just sprinkle some salt in, not too much. Bit of pepper, again, just a, a sprinkle. And then you've got some onion. Now I've cheated, I've bought some of these diced white onions, but you can use red or white. Um, I've done it this way because it makes my eyes run. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add some in. Now I must stress folks, this is very important, if you've got an animal, a dog, cat, You've got to keep onion away from them because it's highly poisonous. Uh, I just dropped a piece on the floor so I must remember to pick that up in a minute. If you want to know how much I've put in, I've probably put about, about four tablespoons. This amount of meat is going to feed um, three of us for two, maybe two and a half days. Now the secret ingredient folks is this, it's from Germany, goulash. Now you can get it in different manufacturers sell it, so this is our favourite one. This one I've yet to try out, but my a relative from Germany has sent it over. That's the one I really want, but I've been un unable to find it anywhere on the internet. Um, which is a real shame, because I would have liked to have had a couple of those in stock, just to make sure I don't run out. This is actually out of date, but I don't think it will matter too much. And what we're going to do... Sure. I'm going to put a teaspoon full of it in. You can see that here, yeah, probably can, yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll put just a little bit more in. It's about two teaspoons, I guess, I'm putting in. is all mixed in thoroughly. Put your top on and basically uh, just keep an eye on it, you know, and keep topping it with water. Um, and then there, there is another stage um, which I'll come back to later. And uh, there's a, a little bit more ingredients you need because it's, it's to add the kind of gravy to it and uh, it makes all the difference. So, uh, yeah, I'll catch you, catch you in a little while. Okay, folks, um, it's been on now for over an hour and uh, I've got to juggle things around because my mum's actually got the hairdresser come in and we need the sink. Um, it's, it's a job and a half, believe me, when you've got somebody in a wheelchair and you've got to try and support them up while the hairdresser washes her hair. But anyway, so um, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is, I'm putting the gravy mix in a little earlier than I normally would. Um, this dinner's probably going to be ready for about 
in about another hour and a quarter, hour and a half's time. Um, normally I'd probably put the gravy mix in about, maybe about three quarters of an hour before I know it's ready. But I'm putting it in a bit early this time because I want to be able to stir it and get it all ready before the hairdresser arrives. So let, let's crack on. So the next stage is to use corn flour. I don't know whether you have that abroad. It um, basically thickens the gravy up. And what we're going to be using, which is my standard... Um, well, I so say no, it's not going to be standard. In this case, because this is a large quantity, I'm going to be using three tablespoons of this. It's always best to have um, a, a, a supply of this in stock. Uh, we always try to have one or two spares in the cupboard. It's a bit messy, but... Uh, I'm not going to bother about that. I don't know whether you call them the same elsewhere. I know, you know, you, this, and even, even in the UK, these tablespoons are different sizes. This is a smaller tablespoon. It's not a, uh, um, probably not the correct size. We've got three of those in. It's dry. There's nothing else added to it at this stage. I'm just going to mix it. Dry mix it. Get all the flour and the the corn flour and the bisto. I didn't show you, did I? This is the other important thing. The bisto. It's got to be this one. Original gravy powder. The others aren't quite the same. So that's, that's all done. As I said before, got to be tidy, put things away. Okay, I'm going to now add some cold water to this mix and give it, give it a good stir, and then we're going to add it to the um, to the goulash. be asking why I'm using cold water. Well, if you use hot water you'll find that the actual gravy mix will go lumpy. Now you can, to some extent, get that um, separated when, you, when you're adding it to the, to the goulash, but you'll probably find that you'll get dark, lumpy patches. So if you can thoroughly mix this in with some cold water, just making sure that you're getting in all those nuts and crannies at the bottom of the mug, or whatever um, vessel you're using to mix it in, you'll find that uh, there will be less problem for you in um, separate, in having uh, lumpy gravy. I hope the fan's not causing you too much problem, but we've got to have it on. There's so much steam in that and heat coming, it'll be unbearable. See, there's very little left in that mug. I'm 
this is the most important bit. You've got to now stir it for, for a good uh, minute or two, making sure it all gets distributed evenly. You can't smell it, but it just smell gorgeous, folks. So this is going to be served up after it's been cooking for about two and a half hours with uh, potatoes, that's the main ingredient and then in the case of our parents it's going to be, uh, they can have a mixed veg they're going to be having their cauliflower, uh, broccoli and carrots uh, I'm a meat eater, uh, uh, there's very few veg that I really enjoy The only way you'd probably really get me to have them on my plate is if I fell in love with somebody and uh, then I might, uh, I might uh, make a sacrifice. But um, to be honest with you, I'm quite happy with uh, the way I do things. I mean, I will eat carrots, I will eat um, peas, you know, I'm not going to say, you know, that I won't, but... Um, I won't put them on my plate if I can help it. Right, do you want to have a quick peep? Let's take in and look. There you are, folks. Look at that. You can't really see it properly, can you? But it's, oh, it's, it's just so good. It tastes so lovely. You see how it's boiling away so much? So that's why you have to keep your kettle on, keep topping it up. You don't want your meat drying out. And uh, obviously, you want to have plenty of gravy to go over your uh, potatoes and veg. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that for now then, and I think probably the next time you see it, it'll be on the plate. Thanks for watching. Well, here you are, folks. It's all on my plate. I nearly <laughs> forgot to uh, to share the experience with you. <laughs> now, we've got my dad over here. He's got his sunglasses on because his eyes are a bit sensitive to the light, so... But anyway... Is it tasty, Dad? Yeah. Yeah, it's all past it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, good. So, um, unfortunately, Mum has gone down downhill. She's just had her hair done and she's been terribly sick. So, just means that there's a bit more for Dad and I. <laughs> and, of course, we'll be having it again tomorrow. Okay then, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, until next time, I'll say goodbye. <laughs>